similar time. We had to go through from time, but one of the Wonderful, wonderful. It's good to see you. Yeah. 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 And I'm so thrilled to say, Mr. President. Thank you very much. And this is Joseph Rizzo, the chairman of the council. Hello there. Nice to see you. And Dr. technology, and our dreams. In the days and months ahead, let this spot be the focus of progress, not only in the field of energy, but for the cause of peace. The theme of this fair influence has been cut off. We've seen our economies manipulated, our industries hamstrung, and our people squeezed between scarcity and inflation. Together, the results were gas lines, bottlenecks and bureaucracy. A newly created Department of Energy passed more regulations, hired more bureaucrats, raised did not solve the problem, it became the problem. Our administration is determined to press forward for real solutions. Already, we have in the world more than a quarter million billion barrels an amount greater than 135 days of more than twice as much oil as was accumulated in the preceding four years. We will increase it to nearly three times our current supply as a symbol to our allies of our resolve to reduce our vulnerability. 
We will ensure that on waste, the amount of goods and services that we produce for each unit of energy went up last year by four and a half percent, the greatest increase in 30 years. But energy is still a great concern. Even with our improved conservation, we consume 16 million barrels of oil a day. Now, let me give you an idea how many 16 million barrels is. Imagine once a month. We're the world's largest consumer of energy, but we use that energy well. We are one of the most productive nations in the world. Estimates show that the 25 eastern states and Washington, D.C., which expends most of its energy shuffling paper, produce about as much in goods and services, but we can't afford to be complacent. Our energy appetite means our energy production must be allowed to keep ready production and progress in the world today. Free enterprise. Our economic and energy problems were in large part caused by government excesses and quick fixes, not by we have removed requirements, more than 200 energy-related regulations, cut taxes to encourage capital investment, begun to dismantle the energy problems, the decontrol of all of our energy sources, including natural gas, and this we shall do. Within our boundaries and just off our shores, experts estimate that compared to our current reserves, three times as much oil and gas are yet to be discovered, strengthening our economy and helping our allies lessen their dependence on imported oil. In 1981, exports from this country of coal reached 110 million tons. That's 20% more than Though quite small, our use of solar power is expanding. Many people across the country are experimenting with renewable technologies such as wind and geothermal power. The Synthetic Fuels Corporation has also become operational, managing loan guarantees and price supports for some important projects. We're pursuing our goal of energy security while still respecting and protecting our environment. The staggering statistics of progress that I've recited today are growing independence from foreign oil and our increasing sophistication in using our reserves reflect American ingenuity at its best. This progress didn't come about at, in the last six months. Inflation, which was 12.4 percent, has been running at a rate of only 3.2 percent. And last month, the consumer... But well, we will continue to press for a bipartisan budget, but the only compromise offered so far has been if our side agrees to raise taxes, the other side will continue to increase spending. You know, trying to end the... No government in the history of civilization has ever voluntarily reduced itself in size. With God's help, spend and spend. We don't have a trillion dollar debt because we don't tax enough. We have a trillion dollar debt because we spend too much. We must balance the budget, but history shows it can't be done simply by raising taxes. For that reason, I've asked the Congress to pass as soon as possible a constitutional amendment to require a balanced budget. Then there will be no partisan pointing of fingers, there will be no refusal to compromise, and there will no longer be any red ink below the bottom line of our budget. Twenty years of tax and spend policies resulted in 21 percent interest rates, and we think that's the most compassionate program of help for the people that we can possibly produce. I'm sure that patriots in every country believe that their nation holds the key to world progress. But I have long believed the United States of America and her people have a special destiny. Abraham Lincoln said, God would never cease to call America to her true service, not only for her sake, but for the sake of the world. I believe the challenge of this generation of Americans is to turn our country to a different path, to restore it to the principles that made it great, because the free world 
Indeed, Western civilization needs a strong United States. The community of nations must work together to achieve stability, security, and peace. This exposition that we open today is another step toward achieving those goals. You know, to those who have refused to take part, who are conspicuously absent, who continue to lock their people in misery through isolation and tyranny, we can say to them only, we wish you had come, but we'll make no effort to hide this wealth of ideas. We believe advances in the human condition can only come from open markets, free trading, and stiff competition. Men and nations who ignore those forces will be lost to time. Let the rest of us draw from this exposition a sense of confidence and community. Let us realize that free men and women still have the power to better their lives and raise the standard of living for all mankind. Let us recognize that those things that bind us and keep us strong, our democratic political institutions, our market economic systems, our commitment to liberty, and our belief and faith in human dignity. And let us reaffirm our partnership among citizens, among states, and among nations. What a partnership it was for this community to bring forth this great exposition. Maybe we should all recall that late in the last century, there was a great world exposition. And at that time, there was a man, member of our Congress who actually proposed a measure to eliminate the patent office because he said everything had been invented that needed to be invented or that could be invented. Well, I would be talking into a microphone today. <laughs> if have a good time and God bless you. Standing by for the